So I've been experimenting with some mal expression writing to solve a particular problem. And through a little research, it doesn't seem like an uncommon thing. And there, there's information out there. So it's not something I've invented, but I've been using this as a way to understand better how this works. And so the idea is that um, if you have a joint system where let's say we have a row of fins on some sort of creature and you want to animate them but offset their animation from each other um, there's a way we can do this with script writing so we don't have to keyframe each joint separately so my goal here was to um, set up some expressions that would avoid having to do any keyframing uh, at all just use expressions to drive the animation entirely and also to be able to edit those expressions without going into um, each of the expressions once they were written. And to do this, I've got this other object here, this circle, and you can imagine in a rig, this would just be a control object. And I've added some attributes to it. So before we go any further, let's just look at what I'm talking about. If I play the animation, you can see that we have the leading flipper here that is animated. And then this other one uh, is also animated but is slightly offset, so there's overlapping action between them. Um, so the two things I was trying to achieve in terms of what the animation was like, that we've got a, a root joint in each of these separate joint systems, and you would imagine that they these would all be connected to a central spine or something. Um, but we have a root joint, and I want to be able to drive the animation of the secondary child joint here um, by the root joint, but offset it in time slightly. And then similarly, I'd like to take a secondary root or joint system and offset the animation of its root joint from the animation of the original root joint. Right, so something like this. And then to give myself the ability to control this um, in this controller object, I've created a few um, new attributes that I can use to uh, change the quality of this animation. So I'm just going to turn these first two values down and we'll go in and look at each expression in turn. Uh, but root offset controls the offset in time in terms of number of frames between the animation of this joint and this joint, and could be successive joints down the, uh, if we have more of these flippers. So if I set root offset here to zero and play the animation, they are synchronous, they're, they're working in unison here. But if I add, let's say, a value of four here, what this is doing is uh, having this joint look at the value in rotate y so we're dealing only in rotate y here so looking at the value of rotate y in this root joint but not at the current frame four frames ago so that's what that four is referring to and now you can see it's trailing slightly behind and i could increase this if i went to 12 it would be a half second behind we're working at 24 frames per second here and so you can see it's just working opposite. If I went all the way up to 24, then it would just be back in unison again, I think. Or maybe not. Oh, so it's exactly opposite now. Okay. So we can just use this at low values just to offset the frames. Similarly, uh, offset here is going to change the offset between the animation of the root and the secondary joint. And it will work in all cases because they're all linked to the same value. So now if I change the offset here to six, then the animation of the secondary joint is going to lag behind the root joint by six frames. So it's asking the value of rotation in Y from its root parent, but six frames ago. So it's giving us a little secondary overlapping action. Okay, and 
Then I have got a couple other uh, values, wave range, and so this is like the amplitude of the wave here, and then wave speed is the frequency of the wave. So if I put the wave range down to a low value like 1, you can see it's barely moving. But a very high value, like 50, then we'll get more aggressive swimming. And if we turn up wave speed, then we will get faster, more aggressive spinning. So swimming. So you can see that my wave speed and the offset can sort of interact with each other in undesirable ways so that you have to treat this kind of gently. Right. Okay, so let's go in and take a look at the the expressions that I've used. So I used four expressions for this. And it took me a while to figure out how to do this, but um, they're pretty simple. So we're going to start um, with this joint here. And so if you want to write an expression in any kind of attribute uh, for a node, you select that attribute in the channel box and control right click. I'm on a PC, so control right click, and you can open the expression editor. And if you want to see the expression, you can select the node, the object, and the attribute here. And if there's something typed in here already, then it should appear. If you need to type in something new, I could go to rotate Z, and I could say, you know, rotate Z equals 20, and ending it with a semicolon, and click create will actually apply that. Now, I don't want to do that, uh, so I'm not going to, but... That's how you can do that. And so it's a little hard to read this. So in my notepad here, uh, we can look at what this is saying. So joint one, so that's the node, and then dot separates the attribute. So the rotate y of joint one, this one here, is equal to cosine times the frame number, which then the frame number is being multiplied by control underscore joints dot wave speed. And so what this is, control underscore joints, is the name of this circle. Let me just move this out of the way. And then wave speed is the name of that attribute that I made. So if we just pop back in here. So it's taking the frame number, multiplying it by wave speed, which now is 0.149, you can see. Um, and then that's being multiplied by cosine, so that's going to cycle between, what is it, 1 and negative 1, 1 and 0, I can't remember, uh, but it's a cyclical thing. Um, and then we're going to multiply that whole thing by wave range. Again, it's in the circle node, so control underscore joints dot wave range is referring to this attribute in the circle object. And then, so it's going to grab these values and use them as multipliers uh, first of the frame number. So by reducing the frame number and what cosine is multiplied by, we can reduce the speed. And then by multiplying the whole thing by um, some value here, I've got it set between 0 and 50, but this is totally arbitrary, um, we can change the overall range, so how far it will go. Okay, and we can see that is in here under rotate Y. All right, so now if we look at, let's say we'll look at, no, we'll look at this joint here. So the second joint in this first chain, and so that's called joint two. And so we're setting the value of rotate Y for joint two. And now we're using a new command and a new uh, sort of syntax structure. So we're using um, these two little tick marks. These are underneath the tilde on your keyboard. And when you put um, a command inside these two tick marks, what that means is we're going to set the value of rotate Y from the result of this command. So that's what those two tick marks do. It's giving you the result of whatever this command is. And so the command here is get attribute. 
and you're getting the attribute of something at a certain time. So the get attribute we want is the value of joint one rotate. So remember, we're in joint two here. We're asking it to give us the value in ro of rotate y for joint one, its parent. And if we just left this at time and then put time or frame inside the brackets, it would give us that value at the current time. But what we're doing instead is saying, okay, give us the value of rotate y at a certain time at this frame, but minus a certain value. And that's the control underscore joints offset. So if we look in our circle again, then offset here is set to six. So it's saying the frame number minus six. So if we're on frame 10, it will give us the value of joint ones rotate y six frames ago at frame four. And that's how we get that offset. Okay, so, and then if we go over to this one, so joint four, that's this one here, rotate y, we're doing the same thing. We're saying get the attribute at a certain time of joint one rotate y. That's this one over here. And again, it instead of using offset like we did before, we're using a different attribute, root offset. So that's this one here in the circle. And so we can offset the animation of the root joints from each other by a different value than we were using for the root joint and the secondary joint. There's actually, I'm just looking at this now, there are probably more efficient ways to do this because we're going to repeat this over and over and over again. If we have 10 little legs here or flippers, um, then we don't want them all to refer back to joint one. We want to refer back to the previous joint so we can offset the animation that way. So we could do something like declare a variable um, and put something in here to change the name of the joint that they're referring to, but we can come back to that later. And then if we go to this joint here, it's going to be similar to joint two. It's doing the same thing. So joint five is getting the attribute of joint four. That's its parent root um, at a certain time, which is this frame minus a certain offset value. Again, that's determined by this here. Offset. And then those four things will work together to offset the animation. And again, if I want to increase the range for all of them, I can just turn up that value and then they will increase. So just to make it clear, I'll make another joint and just apply similar um, expression. So I'll go to rigging, skeleton, create joints. And I'm kind of making this in an ideal situation. Uh, it would have to be adapted to whatever you're doing. I'm just holding down X to click, 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 hit enter. So now we've got joint seven, eight, and nine. So first of all, we want to set the animation on this one. So we want it to look back at the animation here and then offset its animation. Okay, so We'll go to rotate Y, select it, control right click, expressions. Nothing here. And we'll just take this one. So we don't want this one. This is the one that we only use the very, very leading joint. Everything else refers to that somehow. So we want to use the one we used for joint four. We'll just have to change some values. So let's copy that paste it in here. So this is joint seven. So we want to say joint seven rotate Y should get the attribute for the rotate Y of joint four, not joint one. So it's referring to this one and everything else should stay the same. Okay. And then if we select this one, the next joint down, we're going to use this expression. 
going to copy that, paste it in here. And again, this is actually joint eight. So naming matters. And it shouldn't refer to joint four, but instead should refer to its parent, joint seven. Create. Okay, this looks a little weird, but anyway, uh, <laughs> I haven't actually tried this yet. So if we want to make a change to something, let's say we did want this to refer to joint four, if we make a change, you have to click on edit here I think we want this to refer to joint seven. This makes seems to make sense, though it looks a little wonky. I'm going to close this and now we'll play the animation. Yeah, okay, that looks right. So we get we're getting a nice offset secondary animation. And because we're using all the same controllers, we can go in and in the attribute editor say we want the offset between the roots to be actually six. So you get more offset between them, or maybe that's too much. Between the roots, we want it to, down to two, so they're not so different from each other. So each one is lagging two behind the previous, two frames. So again, what this means is the rotate Y of this joint is the same as the rotate Y of this joint, but two frames ago. And we can also go in and change the offset here and that's the difference between the rotation of this one and the rotation of its parent. So again, it's looking at the rotation of rotate Y of its parent, but what it was six frames ago, according to what I have here. So if I go down to two, it's looking at it two frames ago, and there's not as much difference anymore. Okay. And again, because I have them all hooked up to the same thing, I can change the wave range. So maybe it's not swimming as hard, it's just for treading water. Um, and I can turn up the wave speed here. And we can sort of break this system if we sort of exceed this too much, or exceed, we start getting overlap that starts contradicting. Uh, the previous stuff. So I might want to just make sure I don't go too crazy with this. Yeah. And so, like I say, there are probably other ways to do this, but uh, I don't know them. <laughs> if anybody has any ideas, you can share them. Um, and just to make it clear, this would be part of a bigger system. So if you had the backbone of this creature here, you might... Okay, mesh editor, go away. So joint one here might be a child of joint 10. Joint four here might be a child of joint 11. And then joint seven might be a child of joint 12. So you could move this whole thing around. They'll all follow. Um, and this, you'd probably make this thing a, a child of your root joint. So, or sorry, make your root joint a child of this thing. So if I just drag this on here, then I can grab this. And I can move my critter around the scene. And all the while, it will still be animating no matter where we go can't move it. Oh, I can. It will keep moving. It's just not updating when I move it. So I hope this is useful and not too confusing. It took me a while to figure it out. I'm kind of a novice when it comes to expression writing, uh, but um, hopefully it will be helpful to some of you. Thanks.